Hey everyone, it's Kyle Wood here with Playa Sonora Realty. Uh, I am at home today. I uh, think I have COVID. Uh, the whole family got Everybody. sick. And uh, so I'm in quarantine for the next four or five days, I think. And we'll see how it goes. Um, we have with us uh, Jorge Valdez from uh, Real Consulting. Uh, he is one of the attorneys that we use here in Puerto Penasco to uh, close our transactions. Jorge, welcome. How are you today? Hi, hi. Good morning. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. Uh, your uh, guidance and wisdom is always appreciated uh, here uh, with us at Playa Sonora Realty and I know uh, all over Puerto Penasco. Uh, what I'd like to do today is uh, uh, you know, give our, our viewers um, an idea of what uh, your firm's role is in the closing process as a, a closing coordinator and as attorney. And then I'd also like to delve into uh, um, how you communicate or what your role is communicating with uh, the other parties uh, such as the notarios, uh, the city registry, I'd like to delve into that. Um, for our viewers today, if you, if you don't, haven't seen our webcasts in the past, uh, what we like to do is provide as much free information as possible uh, through our webcast, through our YouTube channel, uh, Playa Sonora Realty on YouTube. And um, this is a good opportunity to uh, learn about the process to make you feel, uh, hopefully make you feel more comfortable. So Jorge, why don't you give us uh, uh, some of, uh, tell us a little bit about your background um, and uh, how you got started and uh, uh, give us, give our viewers uh, uh, an idea of uh, what you do. Okay, so I said my name is Jorge Valdez. Uh, I've been living in Puerto Peñasco for 28 years and um, my professional background. I have two careers. I have the career in business and the career in law. I study, I studied both careers. So I spent 10 years in, in the universities. I studied the, here in Puerto Peñasco in Guadalajara and also in the, in the state of Ohio in the United States. So that's basically my, my uh, professional background. And I've been working since the beginning for, with, uh, in everything related to real estate. Uh, I started with the working for developers, for large developers. And uh, so I understand very well all the processes from zero to, to develop, to subdivide, to, to get all the permits and then until you sell a condo and all the process that, that is, it gets involved. So I, I know very well that, that, that uh, process. And, and another thing that I, I see sometimes a, a, a difference or a plus in, in, in my side or in my office is that I, I have, a, have a lot of knowledge in the taxes side. So I, I, I have, because of my career in business and my first years of experience working with developers, uh, so I, I, I understand very well all the real estate, uh, taxes involved, and, and obviously because we always try to get the best, uh, the, the best, Tax, uh, taxes, the benefits for, for clients, uh, getting all the tax deductions that they can do. And so to reduce, obviously reduce the capital gains as much as possible without being out of the, out of the law. I mean, don't having, don't putting our, our clients on, in, in trouble, but obviously reducing the, the taxes and capital gains as much as possible. So your firm does both uh, the uh, closing coordinating um, the advising uh, on the legal side as well as tax preparation. Yes, yes. Even that, the, for example, the, the 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 capital gains are calculated by the by the notary public because they are the responsible to to do the issue the final number for capital gains, collect the funds, and they pay to the Mexican government the, the capital gains. But if, even that, that they have the last word, I get very involved with them in uh, being sure that they take all, the clients take all the credits and tax deductions that are allowed by, by the law. So I, I, get, I got involved in all that process. And obviously that's something that benefits my clients 
and we don't I like I don't charge an additional fee for the taxes. I mean, I just use my knowledge to do both the legal and the tax side, and in benefit of our, of our clients. So this is one of the advantages of having a, an attorney that's experienced in in uh, tax law, Mexican tax law, uh, when it comes to the closing process uh, on a real estate transaction is that if you, if you feel you can communicate with notarios and uh, uh, discuss ideas on, on how uh, uh, you might be able to reduce that uh, tax liability for the clients, correct? Yes, exactly. And obviously we also advise our clients on how to, how to get title now thinking in the future to avoid that in the future they're going to be hit so big for, for capital gains or things like that. So we do like a, a tax planning for, for future. That's something very important because I have seen, I have seen documents, titles of trust from attorneys that maybe they don't have the knowledge on the, on the taxes. So then they, did, they do all the legal side correct but they don't they didn't take care of the tax side so then eventually the clients are hit by huge capital gains so that's something that uh, we take care of here in, in our office in real consulting uh, uh, we also have here in our office uh, an, an accounting department because we do accounting and legal in, in the same office uh, we also do immigration services and here in our office we have a uh, Gabby, which is a the experienced accountant with more than 20 years of experience. We have Alexis, which he has a master's in, in taxes. So we have the experience of different people that can help us uh, do the right thing with, with, with our clients. What is the, what is the uh, most common or, or group uh, of problems that you see uh, in transactions, uh, real estate transactions here in Portugal? Porto Penasco, what, what's the most problem areas that you see? But lately, the, the main problem is the timing. <laughs> we cannot, we're trying to do the process has, I mean, expedited as much as possible. But uh, since the COVID restrictions plus many things that have changed in the, in the last uh, two years, so it, it takes so long and that's sometimes the, the problem that we face, we're facing right now, um, that we, we, we try to give our clients an estimate timing for, to gain, to, for them to get the trust. But I mean, sometimes it's, it's impossible. I mean, is there are too many offices and entities involved and everybody is taking longer than before, everybody, Besides also because of the amount of work that we have been last year and this year has been very busy. So, but also because of all the COVID restrictions and everything, is everything is taking longer. So that's maybe our, our, our main problem that we have right now, that timing. Yeah, let's delve into that a little bit deeper. Um, I know that, uh, it, and you can expand on this, that uh, uh, we're, we're facing delays at the public registry, at the notarios, uh, ac across uh, uh, Puerto Penasco, uh, obtaining documents. Can you, can you uh, go further into where the delays are? I have a lot of clients that um, are, you know, we've had to delay closings, uh, uh, getting documentation and they always ask me why is it taking so long and i think this would be a good opportunity uh to educate our clients on on where those delays are coming from yes was basically it's in in all stages of the of the process but for example the first one is the first part the first step to get to set up a, a trust is to get the permit from the ministry of foreign investments and that was a process that usually before you, I mean, there was, it was done uh, personally, but somebody in Mexico City, we have people there in Mexico City that can just walk into the offices and get the permit. Since COVID, now everything is online. Sometimes the offices are open, sometimes they close. So that's, that's the first, that was the first uh, part of the process. Maybe that was a process that will take three, four days. Now maybe it takes three weeks. 
that's that's the first one then second plus the notaries uh, maybe they are also taking longer because maybe i i would say because the market is so active so they are so so busy the amount of work that we all have so that is taking longer for the for the notaries to to also complete the the process and and obviously the one of the of the offices that is affecting more the, the, the timing is the public uh, public records office the office of public records of the state of sonora because uh, again they closed it because of covid and now they have they having problems with the people they're working i mean they i think right now since october they've been working with only one person there so it's it's crazy uh, uh, let's say we, to get a certificate of no liens that we needed for the trust to, uh, uh, before it was a three days process. Now it may be a three months process to just to get that. that we need to set up an appointment on the public records office just to go get the document. And the, the appointment takes six to eight weeks to get it. So it's, it's been very challenging and difficult that, that, that part. Yeah, for those that uh, li uh, viewers that don't know, I think uh, uh, according to MLS, and I know that there's even more that are not recorded in MLS, our multiple listing service. We had over a thousand transactions last year. Uh, just uh, an incredible amount of uh, business being done here in Puerto Penasco. So, um, with the notarios playing a um, a vital role uh, in the transaction process, uh, the trustee banks um, playing a role in the process, and then having to uh, get an appointment with the public registry office, that has really slowed the process down uh, for, for uh, buyers and sellers here. Would you not agree? Yes, the, the, uh, well, now that you said that the banks also has been one of the, entities that is taking longer. Uh, some banks, maybe because the amount, the volume of work that they have, but others because they've been doing like changes. Some banks that they have an office maybe here in Sonora before, and now they are centralizing everything to their main offices in Mexico City. So it takes so long to get an answer from, answer from them. So all those, uh, uh, problems with different entities at the end is it takes uh, a long time to get the, 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 the trust and obviously because we are trying how we're solving that we, we are we are doing it with uh, closing with a private contract we call it a bridge contract and obviously for example we get a power of attorney from the sellers to to be able to so we can continue with the process without the sellers needed to sign anymore because if they're gonna be paid, we don't. I mean, we we can need to have the control that we be able to sign sign off at the at, uh, when everything is ready. So that's part of the uh, way we are doing it to solve that problem. Yeah, because right now maybe a trust is gonna take you six months, and uh, so obviously you don't wanna wait six months to purchase a property, as you know. So people wanna close right away. So that's the way we do it, getting a power of attorney from the, from the yeah. sellers. Um, Jorge brings up a, a, a point here is that there is, there is a way to uh, close the transactions uh, without the uh, trust being uh, uh, ready. And we do that via a private agreement. And as you had indicated, Jorge, the, there is a, uh, uh, a safety feature built into uh, the private agreement where uh, we do require that the sellers have uh, a power of attorney or, or have given somebody a power of attorney to sign in the seller's place. Is that correct? Yes, that's, that's what we do because the seller is going to be paid off or paid or maybe sometimes we have a, a retained amount to the end until all the paperwork is complete, but the seller is going to receive most of his uh, the price uh, up front. So in order to protect the buyer, that's because we request the the power of attorney from the sellers. We, in the case we get into our office, so we, we can continue with the process and the sellers, they don't need to come back to Peñasco if they don't want any, anymore. 
And we really can't, uh, uh, the, what protects our title, uh, we do our due diligence uh, period. We have our due diligence period. And during that time, we have to get a certificate of no lien. Can you mm -hmm. talk a little bit about the certificate of no lien and how important that is for closing? And yes, obviously, that's the first that we, the first thing that we do in any, in any transactions, we review the title, be sure everything is correct with the seller's uh, trust, with the seller's title. And obviously, we, re we review in the public records office that there is no any, any liens or then nothing that may uh, avoid the property to be, to be sold. So that we check all the records and also in the, in the city, be sure the taxes are current, etc. And, uh, and then obviously we, we, re, we request a certificate, a certificate of no liens, which also is going to be included in the, in the, in the trust. Uh, so in the, in the process, even that we, we can check online that the property is free and clear, Anyway, we request the certificate because that, that, give, that give us the, the how, can I, how can I say, to be sure that the, 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 the records, public records office issue a legal document showing, saying that nothing is, there's no problem, the property has no, no leads. For, so, for those that don't know, uh, you can actually look up your, your, uh, your status of your title online through Ecurson, is that correct? Yes, you, you can, you can, you can. And, and you need what's called your inscription number uh, to look that up, I believe. Is that also correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, the, you need the inscription number, which is only, is in the very last page of your trust. You want to see it's a, uh, it's a last page that is usually attached there in the, in the, in the back cover of your trust. And then you have the inscription number. And with that, you can go online and check and check. The, 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 the property is free and clear. But really we need a doc, legal document from the public records office also. Yeah, and it's, it's, <laughs> it's advisable uh, to, if you are thinking about listing your property, it's advisable to have your documents in hand, either your trust or uh, your deed. And then uh, uh, you can look, at, look it up online uh, with your inscription number to see if, uh, um, uh, you're, you're, you have a valid title to uh, move forward with the sale. Um, uh, is there, for, for those listers, listings, uh, people that are listing their properties, what do you, what do you find is the most common, common obstacle um, uh, to uh, transferring proper title uh, to a um, to a new buyer, is there is there anything that stands out in your mind that may be an obstacle, like a uh, defect in the deed or, or um, surveying not 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 being accurate? What are some of the most? Uh, I would say that people that that had a mortgage on the property and they paid off the mortgage, but they never canceled the actual mortgage. Once you paid off the mortgage. You need to do a process to to modify the trust because uh, right now the the mortgage company is on first place, it's like the trustee on first place, and the the actual the buyer the client is on second place. So once you paid off your mortgage, you need to, to cancel the mortgage to be the so the the, the trustee on first place will be the, the 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 seller in this case or the or the owner. Uh, that's maybe one of the most uh, common problems that we face is people think that once they pay the bank, they don't have to do nothing else. But no, they, they, they need to modify the, the, the trust to cancel the, the mortgage. So that takes us, it's like a two, two closings in one because we need to do the two processes and, and, and it takes longer to do it. So I, I would say that maybe. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. I, I own over at Las Palomas and I do have mortgage on mine. It's uh, actually through uh, GMAC Homecomings, and I still have that mortgage. Mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, uh, the mortgage company is uh, the first beneficiary of the trust. Um, and if I were ever to go sell that, um, let's say if I've paid off the note um, and I plan on selling it in the future, you have to contact uh, 
the uh, the uh, loan holder or the <laughs> lien holder, and you also have to contact the trustee bank to make that change, show proof that you've paid it, paid off the loan, and then have the uh, the, the lender removed as the first beneficiary. Correct? Yes, exactly. So when if you have a mortgage, then the, my advice is that as soon as you pay that, do the do the cancellation of the of the lien right right away. So you know it, you you will avoid problems in the future. But some lenders may be out of business or the banks or that's then we need to look for somebody for a legal representative from each bank or each lender to 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 cancel that that uh, mortgage. So it's it's important to do it right away since you're paying right there they they will sign up uh, easier i would say yeah and um and then and like and then maybe another problem you won't believe it but the people that they don't have the trust and they don't have a, a copy and so even that we can get a copy from the public records but the same problem that we have right now with the, is is really hard to get a copy so it's important for them to have a a copy a complete copy of the trust and and if they can and send us a copy complete complete copy because we need to read some people they sometimes they send us only oh, then let me send you the three or four pages but now we need to, to review different aspects different a lot of details in the, in the trust so we need a complete a complete copy yeah and, and, uh, jorge brings up a good point uh, if if your agent is a member of ampi and also a member of MLS, uh, that agent is required to obtain a complete copy of your trust and uh, to, in order to list the property uh, up front so that uh, we can provide that uh, uh, trust uh, to the um, ap appropriate professionals. Um, if you don't have a copy, like Jorge said, uh, you can obtain a copy from the uh, the public uh, public registry. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. And the your agent. From the yeah, and your agent should be able to help you with uh, with obtaining that copy. Um, again, it's all about uh, consolidating and having all your documentation in order and in order to facilitate a, a quicker close. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to like to say? Any any tips that you'd like to to give our our clients and uh, um, uh, that you think that they should know about? It was, I think another advice that I will give to to the people from thinking of selling their property uh, is like to get an estimation of the capital gains, a calculation of the capital gains. So they have an they already have an, in mind. They know and they have an idea of how much they're gonna pay, because then they're surprised. You know, people think that think that they are not gonna pay, and when you say no, you need to pay these capital gains, so they it's a surprise for them. You see, in, the problem in Mexico is that the transactions, even that you sell or buy in dollars, the transactions uh, for capital gains are recorded in pesos. At the exchange rate or when you bought it so there's a there's 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 a problem for a lot of people i have seen let's say let's say a person that bought a for a hundred thousand dollars a property in no no i don't know in 2012 but the exchange rate was 13 pesos right so it was 1.3 million pesos it was the, the equivalent now they are selling even even if you sell for the same a hundred thousand dollars but now the exchange rate is 20 so now it's two million pesos so you have a profit in peso pesos to pesos you have a profit and and unfortunately was you need to pay capital gains and that's a surprise for the people because they say hey, i i or some people that is even losing money they say i yeah. i pay one 150 now i'm selling for 120 why am i paying capital gains yeah, and that's because of the difference on the on the exchange rates. So that's yeah, that's, that's a problem. The the capital gains uh, tax issue uh, is uh, a big problem for a lot of sellers, and uh, in order to speed up the process and and uh, uh, so you have an expectation of of what you're going to walk away with, it's always advisable to obtain a uh, estimate of your capital gains tax. 
based upon what you would expect to get uh, as a sales price uh, for, for your property. A um, lot of times uh, we will find that we do have a inspection period where we get a, an estimate of our closing costs. But what happens many times is that uh, the seller hasn't done their due diligence up front before we've gotten the, uh, uh, before we've listed and then they're surprised by their capital gains tax. Exactly. Yeah. So, and, and you can prepare that, uh, a prospective seller can come, come to you and, and, and have you prepare an estimate prior to it even being listed. Is that, is that yes. correct? Yes, sure. Any, anytime you just, yeah, I will need a copy of the trust and a, a price they have in the uh, idea in their mind of how much they want to sell it for. And with that, we can we can get a uh, capital gains uh, estimation, so they they have that clear since the beginning. And sometimes that gives us time also to to prepare to some documents that we need to reduce the capital gains to to take some tax deductions. That also that because also it's important to do it when you list your property because sometimes when you wanna you have the client ready, you want to close in 30 days or 60 days, there's no time to do some paperwork for, for to reduce the capital gains. So that's another reason because I would advise to get an estimation upfront when you, when you list your property. And obviously we can, we can help you. Jorge, how can, uh, how can our clients get a hold of you? Okay, but my, my, I think the easiest way to reach me is by email. My email is Jorge, J-O-R-G-E, at realconsulting.com.mx. You can also find our webpage. It's the same, realconsulting.com. And, uh, or I have a U.S. Uh, a phone number, 602-412-3598. They can also give me a, give me a call. Well, I appreciate your time. Um, we are on Zoom and we're limited to a 30 or 40, 40 minute uh, time frame. I do appreciate the time you've spent with us today, Jorge. No, thank you so much and feel free to, to send me any questions you may have, your clients may have. I, I'm always I willing to, to help them. Thank you very much and you, uh, you have a good day. When thank you, same to you. Bye-bye.